Hey everybody, welcome back to Steph Stuff. My name is Stephanie and today we are in the kitchen. We're going to make some chicken pot pie. Um, it's not a real fancy recipe. It's definitely not hard. It's so easy. I'm even leaving off the bottom crust for this recipe. You don't have to do that. You can absolutely put the bottom crust, but I'm not going to today. Also, I had on, I have on a really cute top here it's a pink it's super cute but i just saw my mom and i made absolute fun of her for freezing to death in her house i get back here i'm freezing to death it's karma so you're seeing me again in this sweatshirt it's just just the way life works at least it's instant karma and i don't have to wait to see what's going to happen to me so anyway i'm going to get you guys spun around here i'm going to show you what we've got to use for our ingredients and then we'll get started chopping some vegetables. So typically when I make this I would use a little bit more potato. But this is actually going to work out perfect because I'm a using cream of potato soup in this so that's going to have a lot of potato flavor and also uh, I have a really small baking dish. I stopped at TJ Maxx yesterday when I bought those glass dishes and I found this Le Creuset casserole dish. I can't resist like her say so um, I grabbed that and it's not huge um, so this is going to be perfect I'm going to do the two potatoes a couple carrots um, not that whole onion I'm going to use a, at least half maybe a quarter of that onion got the frozen corn frozen peas the chicken from that rotisserie chicken we're going to get that shredded up here. I also have the flavor ups that we found at Dollar Tree. This is rich garlic and herb that we'll use. And then the soup and I have my pie dough out there. I have a really really easy pie dough recipe and I actually could have grabbed some when I went to the house today but I didn't. So store-bought's fine. Just call me Anna Garten if you can't find homemade. Store-bought is fine. Give us just a minute. We're going to start chopping vegetables and getting them into this pan. When I'm chopping an onion, I like to go through and just get off any of this loose skin, anything that can cause my knife to slip while I'm chopping. This isn't too loose. I got some of this extra off already, but I do like to do that because I think it makes it a little bit easier. I don't have to worry about my knife slipping when I am getting it started here. Now, I, I like onion flavor, so I'm not worried about putting half of this onion in there in the chicken pot pie. Um, I do have some oil in the pan. I'll go ahead and turn that on. And we will get started. So that is going to cook down quite a bit. These potatoes were already washed, so they're good to go. I'm going to dice these up kind of fine. Not super small, but into bite-sized pieces if possible. Also, that'll help everything to cook evenly. If all your dices are the same size, everything should cook a little easier, a little more even. I usually prefer to use a Santoku knife. That's what I'm, what I have at home and what I use the most. So anytime I switch to this knife, I always have to struggle for a second switching back to a chef's knife. One of the pups is already on that potato that dropped. You can probably hear him crunching. So I got 
these potatoes diced up. Well, of course, the one I'm showing you wasn't cut all the way through. But you can kind of see these are maybe, I'm really bad with measurements. These are maybe half inch, quarter inch. I don't know. They're not big. Carrots. This is controversial. I'm aware. I don't always peel my carrots, especially if they're going into something like this. I just wash them off and I roll with it. Now look, if the peels look like they need to be removed, they're going. But if they look fine, they're staying. I want to give these vegetables a little bit longer to cook down. The frozen ones, especially the peas, I'll just pour those, the, those in at the very end. But these that are raw need more time to cook, to soften up. All these veggie scraps that we've got here, uh, everything except the onions will go home to the chickens. I want to be better at chopping to where I use my fingers as a guide for the knife. And I know unless I practice that, I'm not gonna get any better. need that skill to stick with me. I don't know that it's going to because I'm kind of just in the habit of chopping, but again, I really do want to try to get better about that. Chopping vegetables, to me, is so therapeutic. Like, I just want to do it. That's all I want is just to chop vegetables, and I'm a happy person. These are going to need to saute for a while until these soften up. So I'm not going to make you watch all that. I'm going to get started on this chicken. I'm going to get it uh, shredded. Anything that I don't use in this is going to go home either to make chicken stock later or we have um, some big dogs outside and we keep a crock pot of goodies for them. So it might go It'll either be used for broth or it'll be used for the dogs one way or another. It's not going to go to waste, whatever we don't use. So I'll get started on this and keep an eye on these vegetables. We'll be back once these have softened up quite a bit. One thing that we haven't done that I always complain about is we haven't seasoned this food. So what we're going to do is... I know we're going in with this uh, garlic and herb, but I'm still going to do a little bit of, ooh, or a lot of bit of garlic powder. Some salt. I did add a little bit of chicken broth in this to kind of help this, these vegetables along. I may add just a little bit more, and I only made like a couple tablespoons that's cooked out. So we're going to salt pepper this real good. Yeah, this is looking great. These vegetables still need to cook for a few more minutes, so they're just going to hang out and simmer away, saute away. I got the chicken done, 
So once we're ready, this is going to come together pretty easily. I'll tell you what I'll do. I will go ahead and add some of the corn in here. Let me get this open and I'll show you about how much corn we're going to add. We don't need a ton of corn in here. I'm going to add maybe about a third of a cup. I don't think that was a full half a cup at all. Now, I've made this, you can, you can make this any way that you want to. Let me try to get you guys a better angle of that pan. There we go. Ooh, I'm so sorry if that was super shaky. Um, you can make this any way you want to with whatever vegetables. I've made it with all fresh vegetables before, and then I've made it with everything out of a can or frozen, whatever. You could use mixed vegetables. I also almost, I almost used dehydrated vegetables for this because I had some at home, and I almost brought those, and I was going to rehydrate them and use those instead of everything else that's in here. I decided not to for no real reason. I just thought, well, we won't throw that on top of everything else that we're doing today. Um, but again, these vegetables, they do need to soften up a little bit more, so we're just going to let that keep going. They're seasoned up now. I might add another splash of chicken broth just while they cook to keep anything from sticking to the pan. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to... We're going to stir in some of this. I can't wait to see how this smells. And then we'll get our soup, maybe a little bit of milk, depending on the thickness. I'm definitely going to add some more of our spinach powder. And... We have our frozen peas to stir in. Our vegetables have cooked down. It did take longer than I anticipated. I don't know why I always forget how long it takes carrots and potatoes to cook down. Um, I did wind up adding a little bit of water to this and I covered it. Just let them cook. So the carrots are still firm, but I can cut them with this little plastic spoon. Um, and the potatoes too, they're just, they're not cooked to mush but they are soft enough. So let's try this stuff again. This is our flavor up herb, rich garlic and herb. I know we put the garlic powder in there, but it said to add about a tablespoon. That's what the directions say. Oh, get away corn. Oh my gosh, that smells amazing. I tasted of it when I opened it, um, and it, it reminded me of Better Than Bouillon, like a really thick, condensed base. Oh, that smell is <laughs> outstanding. I, I love that. I really want to go get more of that. So next is some of our spinach. When I bought that, it was like one of the big, huge bags that you get over in the in the produce section, and I just stuck it on the dehydrator, and honestly, it was cooked in no time, or dehydrated in, I don't know, just about eight hours or so. I did it in the winter, but again, I felt completely ripped off about how much I had been spending on powdered greens when they were that easy to make. I wanted to add just a little bit more. In my green stalks that I have planted, I have um, some spinach and kale in there. Whatever I don't eat, I'm hoping that we can just go ahead and um, powder that as well. Okay, so we're going to add... You can make your own cream of soup mix. I've also seen cream of soup powders, and then you just add whatever vegetables you want to it. So I am also going to add a little bit of milk to this. I like, yeah, I was looking to see how much, I don't think I need two cans of soup, but I do need a little bit of milk to kind of make this creaminess go just a little bit further. And also, I don't want it to be a dry casserole. I don't want this to be um, 
just not have enough moisture in it so that it tastes good. So give me one sec, we're gonna get the milk in here and we'll add that in. This is that shelf stable milk that we bought from Dollar Tree. I used it, oh I used some the other day when I made a peach cobbler. I didn't do a whole video on that but I did, oh no. I didn't do a whole video on that, but I did a um, Instagram or a, yeah, a reel on Instagram or YouTube maybe. I did a short. I don't know. There's so much social media. It's kind of crazy. Kind of tough to keep up with when you're checking all of it regularly. <laughs> so this is what our base is looking like now. I am going to go ahead and add in some sweet peas. This is... 12 ounces. I'm going to add about half of this. That's the dog barking. It's so fun. I don't know what I'm going to do when I'm back at home because there's a lot of dogs there and they bark at everything. That's the one thing. Lola's a dachshund, a dash hound. And um, we, we have a couple more at home and they bark at everything. That's a hound thing. Right now, I think they're barking because people are trying to enjoy this weather and they're walking past the house. How dare they? So, even without the chicken, this looks really, really good. Um, I'm going to check on these wild beasts outside, make sure that everything is good, and then we'll come back and add the chicken. My hoodlums are back inside. I think they smelled that I had chicken out here. And uh, so now they're sitting here begging want me to pay a chicken tax like they did just sit here and try to bark the whole house down I'm just tearing this up um, if you do if you just like boil some chicken uh, boneless skinless chicken and you want to shred this up use your mixer you can use a hand mixer stand mixer any kind of mixer put it in there in either in your stand mixer bowl or Put it in a bowl for your hand mix or whatever. Do it while it's still warm. It shreds it up really nice. Now, if you just still want like chunks, bites of chicken, then you probably don't want to do it in the shredder. Or just keep an eye on it. I'm putting in, I don't know, not quite two cups of chicken in this. Oops. There was still a little bit of skin on that piece. So, that's... That's what we're doing. I think it's looking delicious. If I could keep it in this pan, we'd be in better shape. i add a little bit more of this milk. Mine has that little bit of a greenish tinge just because of where I put the spinach powder in there. If you put spinach or kale or greens in there, that'll happen. If you just want to leave it out, you won't notice it. I'm going to get our baking dish ready and we'll be right back. I mentioned before that I had gotten this Le Creuset baking dish at TJ Maxx. Was it yesterday? Um, when I was there, I love Le Creuset. I don't have any of this color. This is stoneware. Um, I've got a couple of enamel cast iron pieces and I've got uh, some other stoneware. But this one, I thought it was oyster. And the bottom of it, the sticker on it said flint. So I'm not sure if maybe it is oyster. And um, I just had the word flint on there. Or if flint is a new color. I'm not sure. I'm going to move you back so you can get a better view while I get this in the pan. Okay, so this is just going to go in here. Now, with this being stoneware, I shouldn't have to, um, I shouldn't have to, to grease it. If you're using uh, glass or anything that typically you need to spray, oh my gosh, I, I got this so right on my mounts. I'm so proud of myself. Um, if you're doing metal glass or something that needs Nonstick cooking spray definitely use that. I don't usually have to use it when I use stoneware. I've got quite a few pieces. I really like the way that stoneware holds up. One thing when you're cooking with stoneware is you don't really want to preheat your oven um, unless you've got something really, 
you don't want to you don't want to shock it that's what I'm trying to say like you don't want to have cold food in this dish and then throw it in a screaming hot preheated oven that's what I'm trying to get across there but I have to get a crust rolled out for this I don't have a great spot set up where I can roll this crust out where you guys can see it so you're just gonna have to trust me and you'll see me when I come back laying the crust across here <laughs> pie dough rolled out and again I just use um, a pre-made pie crust now because this isn't round we're gonna get creative with getting it on there yeah oh this looks perfect and a matter of fact I can actually just I could trim away these edges or I should be able to just press it down and seal it there. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna tell you guys, oh, it's gonna seal, and you know good and well it's not. It's gonna bust out all over the place. So just like it happens. Um, I think that they look very cute and very rustic when you just put a real simple, I like just this simple hole in the center. You could be fancy and you can make, um, you know, slits, designs, whatever you think looks good. I really like these rustic looking pies. And I am just crimping these edges down and I'm pressing the dough into the dish. But like I said, I'm telling you guys that this is going to seal it and it absolutely won't. I just know it. But you're going to want to put this on a cookie sheet hundred percent now that looks absolutely lovely we're gonna do an egg wash on it I've got the egg ready I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to it and we'll get this brushed on I just used one egg and I added in I don't know a teaspoon of water I just stuck it under the faucet and turned it on real quick if you don't have a pastry brush do not worry it's all okay we are going to just dip a paper towel in this egg wash and brush it right on our pot pie. When I was little, did anybody else do this? When I was little, I thought it was called chicken pock pie. Like it had to be related to the chicken pox somehow. And it was just a chicken pock pie. And I would ask for one all the time. My mom, you know, we'd have those little banquet ones. We didn't have homemade when I was a little, little. Once I got to be like a teenager, we got to where mom would make them for us. And they were my favorite. But yeah, when I was little, I thought they had something to do with chicken pox. And I thought that we were asking for a chicken pock pie. So I don't know if maybe I thought it would cure chicken pox or cause them. But I definitely thought they <laughs> were related. So once you've got your egg wash all on, that's going to look so pretty. Um, I'm going to get this on a cookie sheet. I'm probably going to line that with foil. Get this on a cookie sheet. Get it in the oven baking. I'm going to bake it at 350 for um, maybe half an hour or so. I'm going to kind of keep an eye on the crust. Make sure that doesn't start getting too done. Everything in it's already cooked. So really all we're looking for is this, this crust to bake up golden brown. And it just kind of helps those ingredients inside there to marry their flavors together so that they're most excellent when it's time to eat them. So we're going to get this in the oven and I will bring you guys back when we're ready to cut into it. I'm going to have to clean up this kitchen and I would very much like somebody else to come and do that for me though. <laughs> Our chicken pot pie is done. It's come out of the oven and I did tell you guys that as soon as I told you it was going to seal, it wouldn't. And it didn't. I'm so glad that I had it on this baking dish. You can see, oh, well, you can see that it is stuck to the baking dish. So that'll be fun. But um, you can see there it's kind of leaked out and around the corners. But that's okay. That's why we put it on the cookie sheet. I'm going to have had this setting for a little, I mean, obviously I can touch the, the bowl that it, or the dish that I cooked it in. So I'm going to just scoop out a little bit. If you use your nice stoneware or your enameled cast iron, I don't use any metal utensils in my Laker Say. Um, 
these are heirloom pieces. They're going to last forever. And that is our chicken pot pie. It's still piping hot. I can't believe how steamy it still is inside. That crush is really good. We can see that egg wash made it just cook up so pretty and golden brown. Let's have a little bite of this. Mm. That's real hot. <laughs> that is real hot. Um, the flavor is really good though. I am going to have to let this cool before I can eat some more of it, but uh, I hope that this has been helpful for you guys. I know that it wasn't a very structured recipe as far as exact measurements. If that's something that you're interested in, I can absolutely find a, a, a pot pie recipe to link for you or I can come up with some more exact measurements than what I did. This was a non-traditional size baking dish too. Um, I don't know. It's maybe like a 5 by 8 or something. 5 by 9. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's not a traditional size baking dish. You can also do it, of course, in a pie dish, but I just bought this. I had to use it. Um, the flavor is really good. I might add just a little bit of salt. And I think next time if I still have those flavor ups, I'll add a little extra of that. Give it a little more kick on it. Otherwise, I'm very happy with it. It tastes delicious. I never make chicken pot pie the same way twice. So, that's fine. Anyway, going to get uh, let this cool. Have some dinner. We are watching Madame White, the Madame Blanc mysteries on acorn tv i don't know if you like that if you like um british mysteries that's my jam so i'm gonna try to not make a mess let this cool watch some tv and tomorrow is monday we'll be back at work so i hope you guys have had a great time in the kitchen with me i've certainly enjoyed it and we will see you next time if you like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you're not subscribed to the channel we would love to have you here and if you have a friend that you think might enjoy this video, please feel free to share it with them. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great night.